Another common use for space missions is the design of space telescopes and other remote sensing instruments meant to detect things in our solar system or, or throughout the entire universe, to be honest. And there are a number of these. The most famous ones are these two. On the left, you have the Hubble Space Telescope, which has been operating for a number of years and is the single most uh, responsible for papers of any instrument that NASA has ever launched, I believe including the moon missions. There have been a number of scientific papers that have been written as a result of research done using the Hubble Space Telescope. On the right, you have the James Webb Space Telescope, which hasn't launched yet, but it should be launching sometime within the next couple of years. And it is, in many ways, the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. It is much, much larger. Uh, just to give you an idea, the entire Hubble Space Telescope could probably fit into this little piece right here. The center mirror, maybe not quite, but pretty close. And uh, most of this is just shielding that is used to, to cover it. So these are the most famous ones, but what are they used for? Well, the main thing that these observatories are used for is two reasons. One is to observe things that you can't observe from the surface of the Earth. So you can see here, this is what kind of light passes into the atmosphere. And anything where you see something low right here, we can detect those signals from Earth very well. Where you see something high, the atmosphere absorbs all of the signal and you can't detect it at all. So it's very useful to put things into these frequencies that we can't see very well. For instance, there are a number of X-ray and gamma ray telescopes that are detect things and also ultraviolet Hubble can detect into the ultraviolet range. These things can allow us to learn things that you could just never learn from Earth. You have a number in the infrared range. The infrared range, you can kind of see through it as you can see here, but it's very noisy in Earth because it tends to show noise in the, the temperature ranges that are, are sensitive. You know, if the atmosphere is warmer a particular day, it'll have more noise, so you have to, to do a lot more calibration. But you can do some stuff from, from the ground or from um, airplanes, as the SOFIA telescope does. But it can be useful there. And uh, it's less common, but there's also into this microwave region that uh, you could theoretically do something with, but it hasn't really been done in practice. So this is the Compton X-ray or gamma ray telescope. As mentioned, it can be used to detect really high energy events things like supernovas and other things like that. And there's a whole bunch of, of complex science and engineering that goes into allowing it to do this, but it is there and it's considered one of the great uh, NASA telescopes. Um, similar things with X-rays, although X-rays are a lot easier to deal with than gamma rays. This is the Spitzer Space Telescope. Of course, you know, this isn't the real background of space. This is an artist's rendition. But it's used to indicate that this is an infrared telescope, and this allowed us to get some of the infrared vision of the universe, which will allow us to see things that are like dust clouds, things that are more normal temperatures, not the high temperatures of stars, but more dust. And you can even detect planetary type objects potentially that, that could be out there, although I don't believe Spitzer has ever been used for that. James Webb will be an infrared telescope, so it will be able to detect some of that kind of thing, and it might be able to have visual observations of an actual planet. Actually, now that I recall, Spitzer was used to actually image a few extrasolar planets. These two are a different class of missions. The other reason why you might want to have a space-based telescope is if you need observations of the same part of the sky for a long period of time and you want them to be as accurately as possible. You don't want to have any twinkling type effects of, of the atmosphere. And so these two are the, the most well-known telescopes that are doing that. The left is the the um, Kepler 
Space Telescope, which in the right is TESS, both of these are used to detect extrasolar planets. So what they do is they observe a patch of the sky looking at all of the stars and they look to see if some of them are, are dimming over time. And that slight, if there's a little dimming that happens for a relatively brief period of time, it could be a sign that a planet's passing in front of the, the star. And if they detect these on a regular enough cycle, they can say with pretty high certainty that there is indeed a planet there. So both of these have been used extensively, and they are quite useful techniques. There are a number of other types of space telescopes, and I'm using that thing to refer to anything that looks away from a planet. They're not, well, it could be looking at a, another planet, but not the one that they're orbiting around. But generally speaking, this is the kind of thing that they're doing. They're making observations that are difficult to make from Earth and in higher precision than, than you can do otherwise. Some partially because they're able to point at the same patch of sky for a longer period of time, and others because the atmosphere is just not conducive to some of the astronomy that we can do. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Let me know whatever questions you guys have about space telescopes or space exploration in general. I, and thank you for all of your support and everything you guys do. For now, keep on tracking, and we will see you next time.